powerful Nerdcast assemble! Stay dandy, baby. Get ready for a biased review on the One Piece anime series because I absolutely love this episode. And it's all thanks to the last five minutes where we got to see Zoro going completely insane using his classic Onigiri technique. And maybe I'm jumping the gun here, but this might be the absolute most badass version of it that I have ever seen. Suddenly out of nowhere, in an episode which was just sort of so-so, at the very end, they just decided, let's include a movie quality action action scene out of nowhere that's going to blow people's minds. It's very rare in the One Piece anime series that they include a scene which ends up being better than its manga counterpart. And this one, right here, with Zoro, blew my freaking socks off. That being said, even with that, I think that this was a pretty solid episode of the One Piece anime series, which actually had a lot of really great things going for it. I will say that as someone who reads the manga, there are definitely some things here that are an interesting addition. There's a few extra fights which are added to Luffy and the Gifters and the big Suma ring, and I found myself actually enjoying them quite a bit, especially with the creativity they have with these Gifters. There's a scene where Luffy's battling against this, like, bear man, and what I love about the Gifters is how they're like these humans, but they have animal parts, like, all over their body usually on the outside, but this gifter is a little different. He's like a giant stuffed green bear, and whenever he actually opens his mouth, you can see the human head of this character, and I found it really funny in this episode. And while it was really funny, it was also mostly an excuse to see Luffy kick the shit out of some people. And again, just like the Zoro scene, while it wasn't like super over the top and amazing, was pretty damn clean looking, and I have to admit that I really did enjoy it. Aside from that, there's a lot of other little events that are going on throughout this episode, like the fact that everybody who's working under Orochi is starting to crack down on all of these people who could potentially be uprising against them, trying to find people with the little crescent moon on their ankles, and they are just taking everyone to town here. And it's pretty terrifying to show how much control they actually have over this entire civilization. That and the fact that Orochi is super pissed over the death of Komurasaki. Although, come on, we all know that she's not dead. We've already seen her appearing with Toko during Zoro's big battle. But still, it's, it's a pretty important scene. Not to mention there's a little bit of tension between Shinobu and all the other characters here. With Law and uh, Shinobu basically getting really pissed at one another over the fact that Law's group has essentially made things a lot worse for everyone. And he's not really taking responsibility for it, but then again, it's not necessarily fully his fault, but Shinobu, I can't exactly blame her for getting really upset over all of this because of how long they've waited for this big retaliation. For them, it hasn't just been something they've cooked up in the span of a week, it's something that they've been thinking about for most of their lives. 20 years of waiting for this big opportunity to take their country back, all ruined because some random pirate showed up and his bear buddy got in trouble. You have to admit, I'd be pretty angry too. That's the way that I feel about it. Luckily, they do get calmed down and we get the return of Yasui who comes in, who is very excited over the prospect of a big coup which is getting ready to happen. He's waiting for this big revolutionary war and all I'll say is, Pay attention to this character, he's kind of important. But the main reason I'm even doing this review is to talk about that big final scene, freaking Zoro battling against Kamazo as well as Gyukimaru. Now, Gyukimaru doesn't really do as much in this episode, it's really more devoted to Zoro and Kamazo fighting, and it is just brutal and epic. So, what I especially love about this is, of course, the big attack that Zoro does, but what's really great about it is that he actually ends up taking one of Kamazo's attacks, a freaking scythe blade directly to the shoulder, and what might be one of the most badass Zoro moments possible, Kamazo tries to take his scythe back, but Zoro is flexing so hard with this blade in his shoulder that he can't actually remove it. Zoro then proceeds to freaking rip out said scythe, puts it in his mouth, and just does the most badass version of Onigiri that I've ever seen. Like I said, they took a scene from the manga version that was just a couple of panels, like two pages worth of stuff, and they ended up turning it into one of the coolest looking Zoro attacks that I've ever seen. And maybe I am jumping the gun yet again here, but this might be one of the most badass Zoro moments of the entire series. I mean, the amount of detail that they gave to this moment where he just erupted with anger with all of this purple energy exploding around him like a fucking Super Saiyan as he explodes across the snowy landscape with everything around him just crumbling, slamming directly into Kamazo and finishing him off with one hit from his big Onigiri attack. And watching everything around him just erupt and explode and fly up in the air with all the amazing color and Zoro's voice actor just yelling out the attack, man... I went from six to midnight.
So what's the rundown on this episode of One Piece? A very simple but very satisfying episode. They're making a few changes to the manga version in terms of switching some of the events around and even adding some things to it, but to me it's not really off-putting. And for me, this entire episode is just made for that entire scene with Zoro, which, while very short-lived, was incredibly memorable, and the thing that I think most people are going to get really excited about when they watch this episode. To me, that was wholly satisfying, and like I said, it's easily in the top 10 most badass Zoro moments, as far as I'm concerned, and if something that cool is happening this early on in this arc, then you know that things are just going to get crazier from here. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention Sanji in this episode. The way that they build up what happened to him after he was Soba Mask and went over to the bathhouse... That build-up was great, because in the original manga version, they just immediately cut to his face. Here, they build up the fact that clearly he's had the shit beaten out of him by Nami. And a lot of the times this happens in manga and anime where a character will get hit and they get like a big bump on their head. But he straight up just has these bumps all over his face, and it balloons him into this ridiculous, cartoonish version of himself, which looks equally painful as it is funny. And it's little moments like that that contrast with the amazing action scene at the end that remind you that One Piece can do action and comedy and drama really freaking well. And they can manage to combine the two and make them work seamlessly. That's what I truly loved about this episode. So whether it's Luffy's big training moments, Sanji's ridiculous bruised face, or just the fact that Zoro kicks all sorts of ass, this was a solid addition to the anime, which any fan should check out. And even if you don't like casually watch the anime version of One Piece, manga fans, at least check out this Zoro scene. It's all sorts of badass. So I really loved this episode. It was a little slow in some parts, but otherwise, I thought this was kind of a full package episode, which uh, I think a lot of people are going to remember. So for me personally, I'm giving it a 5 out of 5. I got nothing but enjoyment from this episode, and I didn't expect that kind of quality from that big Onigiri scene. They could have really cheapened out on it, but they went the extra mile and made it something incredibly memorable. So, yeah, I really loved it. But you heard my thoughts about the episode. I want to hear yours. Make sure to sound off in the comments section below and tell me what you thought about this episode of One Piece. Are you gelling with that Zoro moment as much as I am? What do you hope to see from the rest of the Land of Wano arc? Thank you guys for watching this review. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. And remember, if you did like the video, use your three-styled stored technique to hit that like button. I would like to thank all of my patrons who've been checking out my Patreon page. You guys have been making some amazing donations to my channel, giving me great feedback on all of my videos. And for everyone who makes a donation to my Patreon, remember, I'll review an anime series of your choice. I would also love to add your name to this list of really cool people who have been helping to support this channel. Otherwise, that's it for today. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay down there, baby.